I started at the New York Power Authority approximately one week after the blackout. We are in the midst of what appears to be a colossal and history-making blackout. It changed our industry. It introduced regulation for vegetation management that we had never experienced or managed before. With compliance coming down, we all knew that, you know, they were talking large fines, and if we were the next utility with a blackout, we could, we could be gone. We could be out of a job. With the regulation came huge fines up to a million dollars a day for a violation. It completely changed the way that utility companies, including First Energy, approached vegetation management. So there was some heavy lifts there. We had to do some edge clearing, but at the same time I had to get the floor in shape. Let's make sure nothing's going to contact those wires or breach a wire security zone. It doesn't happen short term. This is going to take some time. It's not going to be an overnight fix. We're just going to target those incompatibles here that are on the right of way. You guys are doing a good job of keeping any compatibles that we have, the herbaceous that's come up. After reclamation, it took First Energy almost three cycles to really arrive at a place where we are conducting maintenance. What we want to get to is a state where Instead of thinking what we want to get rid of, we're thinking of what we want to leave. When you look at IBM, Bumblebee Crown Patch. and you seriously understand what integrated vegetation management is and what it's all about, Honeysuckle. it's really both an art and a science. There's no cookie cutter method going down the floor. One of these two ash up here, right, John? Yep. When I look at it, I'm managing that vegetation with vegetation, so I'm letting this compatible vegetation do a lot of work for me out there. These are trees that are close. It's a biological control for us. Think about that for a minute. You know, that biological control is, it's free. See a lot of pine. A lot of cherry, couple maples. Those are all going to be coming out. Leave like uh, any low growers, alders, honeysuckle, kind of makes a little shade to keep the high growers from coming in. We have a very detailed inventory process, which is laid out just about a year before the crews actually come out into the right of way and do that type of work. So we manage for both incompatible and compatible. On our system, most of our crews have been around a fair number of years ranging from 20 years to the last five years. I basically have been on every span of Velco's system. They've got 750 or 800 miles of transmission line and I've seen all of it. You might not be able to tell from here, but this whole area is pretty suburban. Everything around here is basically concrete, maintained lawns or housing tracks or shopping centers. So to have these right-of-ways in this suburban area that are going to be green space and that we can manage to benefit wildlife and pollinators is a, is a benefit for everybody. You know, 20 years ago when we would come out to do this work, you'd come into a, a right-of-way and you would see nothing but trees. And you couldn't, in some places, even tell that you were under power lines. And now uh, you, you can see for spans and spans and spans and it's, you know, nothing but smaller brush and things that are kind of wildlife friendly. I've realized something after looking over our rights of ways over the last 15 years, that if we don't keep this rich biodiversity out there, all this flora and fauna is not gonna be there. If I decided early on when I first came here to just mow my rights of way off or spray all the vegetation out there, these pollinators wouldn't be there. These small mammals wouldn't be there. These birds, these beautiful songbirds wouldn't be there. It would be a completely different environment out here than what we have right now. The richness would be gone. The work we do on our rights of way comes with social responsibility and that's a benefit to our profession and our industry. So as we have these linear rights of way across the nation and we're all connected in that, we're able to positively impact that vegetation for the benefit of society. Not just from a standpoint of providing safe, reliable electricity, but also from an ecological perspective. We're at a place where we really can evaluate the positive contributions that we can make to our rights of way and be good stewards of the land. We are very interested in managing the rights of way for pollinators, songbirds, for nesting, for migration, 
to wildlife for cover and for food. We want to work closely with our contractors, with our crews, to make sure that we're identifying that compatible vegetation that still delivers reliable electricity, but moves beyond compliance and looks at the ecological benefit that we can provide here locally at First Energy, but across the nation. And it's starting to bring some joy back into the work that we do. We can go a step further, a step above and beyond what they're expecting from us. We're land managers and we're protecting this environment. We're creating this great low grow shrubs, grub plant community that doesn't exist everywhere out here. And we're maintaining that and it's great stuff. Ha, 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 ha.